if anyone out there right now is on the fence of whether or not they should accept hospice for their loved one, I think that they need to consider that hospice is well trained in the end of life process. They knew more about the end of life process than, than anyone, than the doctors or the nurses or or us, the caregivers. We were unable to help her in her end of life process without hospice. I am very, very impressed by the job that hospice does to help not only patients in their time of need and in their last months of life, but also families. Hospice is for patients, it's to help to control their pain, but also hospice is just about as important for the families of the patients as for the patients themselves. When we're talking about our hospice family, I refer to them in that sense as we have a team of nurses, a physician, and clerical personnel who actually take a vested interest in the, in the, uh, hospital, uh, the hospice patient. Many times I see initial hesitation with families about, about deciding on hospice care for their loved ones. But in a few days, I've always seen 100% acceptance and actually a great appreciation for hospice care by the family members because it's, it, is, it is very good to see that your loved one is being cared for and is comfortable. I think the main benefit actually for hospice is divided again equally between the family and the patient. We are experts at helping the patient maintain good pain control. We're experts at being able to have the patient tell us, you know, I want to be completely pain free and, uh, and, and, and I don't really care how sedated I am. I really want to be pain, totally pain free. You know, we can do that or the patient can say, you know, I'm willing to accept a little bit more pain to be more alert. Anything in that spectrum, really we're very good at being able to manage that at home. And then uh, in terms of the family, you know, just pri providing support. All the time I see situations where the social worker will go and uh, obtain some benefit, something that wasn't even, had nothing to do with hospice. You know, something that was out there that they, they had this resource and they were able to bring that and help the family out with that resource. But just, the, the, it's a multidisciplinary approach where many different disciplines are involved in trying to help the person. When the hospice uh, team is asked to, uh, to come in and help an individual in this situation, there are many needs that can arise. Obviously they need the medical care, they need the uh, nursing, the uh, physician care, they need the, the medical aspect. A lot of other needs also come about. There's things such as uh, setters at times, they need aids, they need help with bathing, they need uh, uh, you know um, social services, they need uh, religious guidance. So basically anything that a hospice patient needs or what the family needs, we're able to provide that for them. Hospice offers a great service there, not only to um, provide comfort to the um, uh, patient, which the family members greatly appreciate, but also they provide counseling and support for the family members. We've been having a lot of new referrals and getting to meet a lot of new patients and families and get in there and help provide the care that they need to um, get them comfortable in the home setting so they can stay there for their final days. Um, I make routine visits um, just to reassess anything that I have changed in these plan of cares such as pain. You know, I want to go back and make a visit to make sure that the pain medication that we have ordered is working effectively and that the patient is more comfortable and, you know, just able to do more for themselves and with their lives like they deserve. That's what hospice is all about is to provide comfort for the patient and for the family. You know, as far as my own training, I'm a family physician and as a family physician practicing for over 20 years, I've dealt with a lot of people in pain. 
I feel that we're really well trained to deal with families as being a family physician, dealing with uh, people that are going through the stages of death and dying, and especially when it comes to making the patient comfortable, I think that we're, that's what we're primarily about. Our role in this instance is uh, not to try to push the individual back into treatment, it's to try to listen to the patient and do what they want us to do and I think that we have the training to be able to understand that and be able to communicate effectively both with the patient and their families. When people are deciding to get hospice uh, involved it is our protocol that we send a team to their home and meet with a family and the individual. There's no obligation for this service but it's an educational time where the family, the person involved can meet with our team so they can see exactly what it is that hospice has to offer. A lot of people think, well, hospice is only for patients with cancer. And even though a large number of patients who are on hospice do have a terminal cancer, there are a lot of other illnesses which would qualify for hospice. As a matter of fact, any chronic illness in which the physician thinks that there may be a good chance that the patient won't survive for more than six months could qualify for hospice. Things such as emphysema, uh, severe heart disease, congestive heart failure, uh, certain neurologic conditions. I've had patients, and I have patients now who are on hospice who have, for example, Lou Gehrig's disease. So you don't want to think of hospice as being only for uh, cancer patients, and you don't want to think of hospice as being only for when the patient is in extreme condition. Any type of chronic condition, I mean, if you think that the individual is in the final stages, and I define that as at this point in time, there's really no more active treatment. There's not referrals being made to other physicians. The person isn't going back to the hospital repeatedly to try to get acute care. Those are the situations where the person should be referred. In terms of diseases, dementia or Alzheimer's disease, the referrals can come from actually from nursing homes in that regard. Congestive heart failure, chronic lung disease, any form of cancer, renal failure. When people think of hospice, obviously we think of end-stage cancer, terminal, untreatable diseases. That's not always the case. There's many other situations that will qualify you for hospice. Situations such as end-stage Alzheimer's disease, congestive heart failure, end-stage pulmonary problems, oftentimes that these people will qualify for hospice. Hospice is initially initiated for a six month period, but after the six month period, the physician reevaluates the patient and hospice can be extended. Many people have had their primary care uh, physician, their family doctor for many years. They don't want to give them up. They're still free to see them and uh, have them uh, involved in their care. Uh, we also work with the primary care physician um, with hospice if they so desire, but uh, by all means, they still have the freedom to see their regular physicians and specialists. The patient can continue to see their family doctor and uh, the hospice service actually works well with the patient's primary care physician and actually encourages the patient to continue the relationship with the primary care physician. They have a family bond with these patients too and you know they may not be able to provide one-on-one -on -one care like the hospice is but they still want to know what's going on in that patient's life and the care they are receiving. It's not that we're just going to give up on them that if there's something that happens to them, we're trying to fix that actually, to the best of our ability. Now, the whole, uh, the whole philosophy behind the hospice is for the person not to be going back and getting you know, chemotherapy or getting, uh, uh, you know, being admitted for uh, uh, situations that could be dealt with at home. You know, I think that uh, people need to realize that we don't give up on them, we don't stop treating them, we don't stop giving them a lot of their regular medicines.
When people begin thinking of hospice, oftentimes they think it's a certain building or facility that they have to go to, and that's absolutely not the case. The hospice is a concept where we bring the entire team to the individual. Our objective is to keep people at home where they're in a comfortable surrounding and setting. So we bring the entire hospice team to your home environment and that's where we provide our services. Hospice services are provided where the patient feels most comfortable. So the patient can be at his or her home, in a nursing home, and sometimes even in the hospital. And can enroll in hospice and hospice services will be provided at that location. Another great thing about hospice is that it's a, it's a service to provide comfort and care for the patient and the family, but the patient, if decides down the road to terminate hospice service at any time because uh, they've changed their mind or there's a new treatment that is available for their current illness. The hospice has no problems if the patient terminates the service and tries another treatment. If the patient wants to go back to hospice after that, hospital welcomes them with open arms. The thing about hospice is that it's not a decision that is set in stone you know you can you can revoke your hospice treatment and that revocation or, or, or being revoked means that then you can go back to a more active treatment so let's say something happens where there's a new drug or something new happens where the individual wants to resume more active treatment for their disease then they revoke their hospice treatment and they go back to the the more active treatment Similarly, if an individual finds that they feel uncomfortable with how the treatment is proceeding in terms of some people get anxious being at home and thinking that they then might uh, pass away in their home and uh, some of them want uh, more of a hospital type care. Under those circumstances, they can completely come in and say, hey, you know, I want to go back to the situation where I was getting more of an active treatment and, uh, and more of the traditional medical care for their conditions. The equipment that hospice brought to our, my mother-in-law's home was at no charge to us or my mother-in-law. All medications that the patient takes, all medical supplies including bedside facilities, etc., are covered by hospice and the patient does not have to um, bear any cost whatsoever. Most of the medicines are covered by Medicare. We run our prescriptions through Hospice Pharmacy, which is a specialist pharmacy that deals primarily with patients that are under hospice care. We also use uh, regular pharmacies in the area as well, but the medicines in most cases are totally covered by Medicare and or the prescription drug program that the person has. When we reach the situation where hospice is needed, there are no more medical costs for the individual or the family. I would encourage you to think about it early on and get those services which are, by the way, totally paid for through Medicare and through private insurances. We didn't have to do anything. The hospital made all the calls to hospice. Hospice showed up at the house with things that we, we didn't even know that we needed. The hospital bed, you know, potty chair, oxygen. They brought everything to us that we needed and to care for her. The problem that I see more often is that people get into hospice too late rather than too early. And I would encourage families to be thinking about hospice services if they have a loved one who has a chronic illness. Some people, when you go and admit them, they're kind of wary about hospice and then after the nurses come in and make a few visits, you know, then they just open up. 
and they're so thankful for us being there and they see what a big difference hospice has made. When we talk about referrals to hospice, unfortunately, these referrals, I feel like, are not made soon enough. We should try to initiate hospice services sooner rather than later because the longer the patient is comfortable, the better it is for the patient and for the family. They helped us to understand what to expect in the end of life process. I think it's important once a terminal disease uh, diagnosis has been given that uh, very quickly we get the entire hospice team involved. Again, what we can bring to the individual and the families is to educate them, you know, what's the problem, what, uh, what can we expect. They need to know what hospice uh, can do to help them out, not only medically, but also the emotional aspect, the anxieties, depressions, the angers, the social aspect, religious needs. And the sooner that we can become involved with this, the easier it's going to be to help them through their uh, situation. It could have saved our loved one a great deal of suffering and pain, uh, as well as eased our minds in the way that, in the sense that uh, we would have known more of what to expect and been more comfortable with caring for our loved one. When a patient gets a terminal diagnosis from their physician, this is a team, team problem, a team effort. Uh, not only is the individual involved, but uh, the family's involved. And so it's very important that the hospice team is able to come on board, educate them, you know, what is the problem, what's their disease, what do they expect as time goes on. And the more people are aware of what the uh, issues are and what to expect, then the easier it is to help them through these difficult times. And that's what hospice is able to do, is provide the education, bring this service to you, and help people through these difficult times. If we could get some of these patients on sooner than what we do, I, I really do believe that um, even though hospice goes not to prolong life, that we would we definitely make their quality of life better, which in turn causes them to live longer than probably what was expected. Because um, we just help get their pain and symptoms under control. We manage that well. Had I known then what I know now, we would have, we would have had hospice much sooner. Hospice is a family's decision to care for their loved one with compassion, love, and um, hospice offers all the tools necessary in doing such. One of the biggest concerns that we consistently run into is pain and suffering. I mean, uh, you know, every, everybody is just petrified of, of as they get to this situation, are they, going to, are they going to suffer? And I think it's something extremely important that the hospice has to offer is that we can bring this service to you. We can minimize your pain and suffering and keep you comfortable in your home setting. One of the things that I think we should realize about hospice is that hospice is not a building. Hospice is not a place. Hospice is a concept and hospice is a group of providers, nurses, social workers, physicians who help families to care for loved ones when they are in the last stages of life, in the last stages of dying. And uh, the hospice concept is a fantastic concept which I have used for over 25 years and have had many, many patients who have really benefited from hospice services. And I would encourage families to think about hospice early on in the disease course rather than, rather than later. I just can't uh, express the amount of care that this team of uh, medical and paramedical people provide for the hospice patient. I think in, in, in the latter days and weeks of life that's an extremely important uh, aspect of one's care and for that reason, uh, that's why I would highly recommend hospice under those circumstances. I'm always just so impressed with the kindness and dedication of the people that work for Tri-County Hospice. The angels of hospice, I call them, because they are angels. Anyone who works for hospice has to be, because 
she she came and she was so tender and caring and loving with my mother-in-law, just the same that I was. I think what a patient and family can expect by choosing Tri-County Hospice is a loving, caring, compassionate relationship that just grows over the time spent in the home. We care and love these patients just like they were our own family and provide the best care and treatments available to help make them comfortable as they're going through this trying time. That's never easy, but hopefully with hospice in there, it does make it easier for the family and the patient.